I'd love to give you an answer that is as to why I think myself and Ryan were the only two people who were left in place because we're so fantastic and we are brilliant and that's just we are, you know. I, I don't know, I never know. I'm very bad at this kind of thing. I have, I have no sense of ego or self, so I can't come out and tell you I did the greatest show in the history of the world. I'm cheap, that's a starting point. I'm reliable, um, I'm relatively creative. I don't know, I, 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 I like to think that what we're doing at the moment is something that, you know, the, the, the audience has been quite good on over the last one. It's kind of hung well uh, in the face of, you know, other things maybe not hanging so well. And, you know, I'm cheap. I think Irish people still continue to listen to radio in their droves because they like hearing people. Um, there are a lot of Irish radio shows, huge tracts of it, and in fact the most popular ones that are based on people. I mean the most listened to radio show in Ireland, aside from Morning Ireland, is Lifeline, which is an hour and a quarter of people talking to other people about stuff that people are talking about. Um, I think most of our most successful radio shows in this country are based around people. Um, and lives or stories that are just happening or first person bits and pieces. Don't get me wrong, there's obviously a huge tract of Irish radio that's based around simply playing a lot of music. And in particular, you know, the, the, the youth stations do really well in that market, the eyes and, and reds and spins of this world. Um, but I think for the most part it's because people like to connect with other people, whether it's the presenter that they really like or whether it's what people are saying to the presenter that they then like to hear. Other than that, you have Spotify and you know, we don't really we're not really needed in the Yeah, don't do it. Whatever you do, don't do it. Don't don't think of getting a job in radio under any circumstances. So people think I'm joking when I say that. I'm not really. I'm here doing what I do now. I've been in radio, being paid to do this uh, for 21 years now, a little bit more than that. And I did it part time, and not being made anything for a couple of years prior to that. Um, I'm one of the lucky ones. For every person like me who starts off in hospital radio, as I did, did a little bit of student radio ended up going to a small local radio station, slightly bigger local radio station, got lucky, ended up in Atlantic 252 for a year and a half, went to a Dublin radio station, and I'm now in RTE. I've done the, the hops in every possible way you can. For everybody who's lucky enough to do that, there are thousands of people who aren't. So really, I'm not saying no. What I'm saying is be really, really sure that this is what you want to do for a living before you get into it because it's not X Factor and you're not instantly going to find yourself well paid and famous and there's, there's every possibility you will have an awful lot of hard work and years with it will go in and you still won't be well paid and famous. I, I'm an introvert. I have no problem saying it out loud now. I was quite ashamed of it for years. I'm very quiet and I'm not good with people. Um, that might seem unusual given the job that I do, but I have, I have a well-practiced face that I've developed over years that I can use in situations like this or when I'm on the radio or if I'm in large rooms of people and I'm being introduced around. Uh, in reality, I'm, I'm quite introverted. I'm terrible with people. I'm bad at making small talk. Uh, so I spent most of my time while I was in Valley Furman uh, speaking to very few people, hiding in corners, reading books. I have probably, I have probably two friends while I was in Valley Furman. Uh, I rarely went out socially. I didn't really, I, Chasers was not really an experience for me. I was there once I think, in, in Chasers. Um, and I didn't really do any of that. And I've only really had two friends. In fairness, they're people who I still know to this day. Uh, but it was different than the experience of a lot of other people. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, it's, you know, I, again, when I was a kid, I, I didn't really spend a lot of time out playing, you know, on, on the circle next to the house. I, I read a lot when I was a kid. I went through a period for a couple of years, I think, where I was doing from a leaving surf, where because it was being bashed into me that I had to study certain things, I went, Arr! rebelled against it, and then only read exactly what I had to. And then once I left and I headed into college, I started picking up on it again. So, yeah, I've read, I've always read, I do. My favourite book changes, I don't know. I could probably tell you now that it's 1984 by George Orwell. It probably is, because I own about five editions of it. I kind of collect editions of 1984 again. If I find myself in a foreign city and I like travelling a lot, usually one of the first things I do is I see where their second-hand bookstores are. And I spend sufficient amounts of time in there and I go home and have my suitcase full of second-hand books that I've bought in other cities. So, 